not going to be doing humorous projections this chapter. That will be next chapter. Um, do make note of that because your book, Merrill's, does go into the humorous, but the humorous will overlap with the shoulder girdle chapters next chapter. So we will not hit humorous until the next chapter. By the way, um, the test in this class will be a week from Wednesday. A week from Wednesday. It's going to be a very big test. Miss um, Hawkins here will actually be helping me design the test. So, you know, if you want to. Give her any bribes for some good questions. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> the multi-choice oh, no, that, answers. <laughs> Select the best answer choice. Questions. Select, hey, that's not even me. That's the registry. That's the ART. They're, they're, they're sick and evil like that. They're, they're kind of evil like that. Them, <laughs> yeah. Do we give her like a rating when she's done? You give her a rating? Write it on the board. Make sure you write your name. Yeah, that's going to depend on the questions. If you want to. Well, how am I doing so far? Now you're making me nervous. Well, you have to do Yeah, I started doing wrong. Yeah, that's always the problem. 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 What's the really cool PowerPoint, so I look forward to seeing what she's going to put together for y'all um, very soon. She made a really awesome PowerPoint last semester for her portfolio, so it was based on Adventure Time. Oh, yeah. Really, really cool. <laughs> oh. um, but back to what we're talking about here, guys, patient prep. So what are the main things you have to look out for when it comes to upper extremities? Your watches, your rings, your bracelets. Please don't leave those on your patients. Even their little armbands, go ahead and take those off if you need to, or at least push it out of the way. Because yes, those little plastic armbands will show up on x-rays, so be careful on that. They say, oh, I haven't taken my wedding ring off in 30 years. Well, I'm sorry, you gotta go ahead and take it off so I can see your finger. It's gotta, gotta be removed, it might be covering up a fracture, you don't wanna be liable for that. So all watches, all rings, all bracelets must come off. Even the ones that are permanent, you may have to cut them off. I've had to cut off many of kids' bracelets. Oh, he's had that since birth. That's his special thingamajiggy. I'm like, sorry, Snip. Gotta cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> just tie it back on later. But, you know, yeah, get your job done. I was <laughs> saying, with regard to uh, those like permanent uh, rings or whatever, um, I've seen some individuals with like swollen fingers. It doesn't look like you could remove it. What would you do then? You know, there's always a pack of lubricant on hand in the hospital. Okay, it works wonders. And also, document. <laughs> If it's absolutely impossible, of course, not. Okay. But lubricant does wonders. I, I'm telling you. Okay. Or, you know, like in the old days, just put butter on it. <laughs> That's so cool. Just go to the kitchen, get you a pack of butter, rub some butter on it. And, guys, make sure. Not really. 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 Not really
long one? Yes. Don't include those in it. Because one time I thought, you know, oh, I'm just going down to the finger. And she's like, no, you need to include the whole thing, even with yes. the nails. You have so to. make sure you get those too. You can't collimate the nails. Yeah, you include them. Yeah, so, like, you know, the nails that go out to here, the fake nails? They say to keep that, just open that up because you want to see all of that. Wow. You flip that. You never know what you're going to see. You never know. You never know. <laughs> All right, so for your, what's ambulatory mean, by the way? Walkie talkies. They're going to be seated at the end of the extra table. Does that mean they have to always be seated? No, but it's preferred to go ahead and sit them down for comfort, especially if their arm is broke. Don't make them stand up and take that x ray. Let them have a seat. Get them comfortable. That's going to help you because a lot of your x rays, such as the elbow, what did y'all learn about elbow x rays last week? You have to have that what resting down? The, the humerus, right? You can't have it elevated. Humerus needs to be resting all the way down. How do you do that? Have them sit down. Don't have them be bent all over like this, and breaking <laughs> poor grandma's back. Don't do that to her. I've seen people do that. It just really bugs me. And then please, I'm sure Mr. Fong's fuss at y'all. Raise your table up, guys. <laughs> don't be hurting your back. That hurts me to watch y'all do that. Don't do that to yourself. Effective extremity always rests on the IR. Almost, well, yeah, every exam we're doing, guys, is free cassette, this chapter. There are no table bucky or wall bucky exams. That comes next chapter when we get to the shoulder and the humerus. Now, if they're non-ambulatory, you're gonna maximize the comfort and safety at all times. That means if they have a shattered humerus, shattered forearm, you need to provide some support for that arm before you try to manipulate it. It may take more than one person to do that x-ray. Have someone support the arm while you move it into position. Put pillows under the arm. Whatever you gotta do to maximize that comfort, that is a top priority for you for your patient care. Why? They're not gonna cooperate with you if they're not comfortable, especially with a broken arm. Very sensitive area of the brain. If you've not dealt with someone with a broken arm by now, they're typically very uncooperative, especially when that elbow is shattered and you got a crazy doctor wanting that 90 degree perfect lateral like I told you all about last week. Did I tell you that story? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got a psycho doctor trying to get you to do those crazy positions. You know, phone call away. Hey, hey, hey dude, you know what? Why don't you come do this yourself? Watch him humiliate, humiliate, humiliate himself. It's quite entertaining. Yeah, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> You're gonna use the smallest IR to demonstrate the anatomy, of course. We're gonna be talking about 10 by 12s. 14 by 17s. Why would you use a 14 by 17? Typically for your forearm x-ray, that is the longest extremity we're doing this chapter. But most will fit on a 10 by 12. Some even an 8 by 10, even though it's not listed there. 8 by 10 for your finger x-rays, guys. You don't need a giant cassette for fingers. Use the smallest one you got. You don't need to be putting a finger on a 14 by 17 cassette. That's just silly. And if you're going to, at least please call me. Don't leave it wide open on a 14 by 17 for a finger. Um, yeah, I'm gonna come like embarrass you if you do that. Don't don't do that. Collimation is. Uh, you can already tell it bothers me. Yeah, I'm kind of a collimation kook. She she probably tell you about that. I'm kind of crazy about collimation. That's from ten years of pediatrics, guys, because we would get fired for that, that kind of stuff. You have to have tight collimation at all times. Why ethical rad protection? And especially with your extremities, guys, it's not just because Mr. Don, he was harping on it, it's gonna optimize your image quality. If you have that collimation the wide open on a finger x-ray, it's gonna make it very cloudy and grayed out looking and so that nice sharpness you wanna see with the bony trabeculae. So that tight collimation is gonna optimize image quality. If you don't care about your patient's safety, at least care about your image quality. Although I hope you care about your patient's safety as well, as we all should. Yeah. Um, so when I was in clinic last week, someone came in for a hand mm -hmm. and on the um, what was it? I guess like on the chart it was saying that they were basically just looking at this digit mm -hmm. but they had them do like a hand x-ray oh, so, so that's dependent on location some locations per protocol with a single digit x-ray they're gonna go into an entire hand for that first view and then do singular oblique and lateral views mm -hmm. that's dependent on protocols per location okay. Mm -hmm. Some places will have you do two or three fingers. Like it'll be a single digit and do three fingers for comparison views. Mm -hmm. It just varies per location. At Texas Children's, you'd always do at least three digits for a finger to compare them. I think they do the hand just to rule out any other situations. Like they that do. can cause pain to the digits. They do. And it's just dependent on those doctors we want to see. Boy, this is an easy one to remember. We don't have to worry about 72 inches at all this chapter. In fact, we don't have to worry about 72 inches this entire semester. Hey, we've only got to do 40 inch SID. That's less to remember. 
So guys, if you missed this question on the test, I just can't help you anymore. <laughs> um, everything to do with SID is 40 inches this semester. We got that? Not a trick question. Choose the best answer, 40 inches, okay. All right, of course, ID markers. Do we ever use digital markers, guys? No. Well, we saw no, your texts really, use digital markers? Yes. Yes, uh, yes they do. Like, and shame yes, on them. I don't think I saw a single <laughs> physical one. And shame on account. them. It's not because Mr. Donahue says so. It's because the ART on your registry says no digital markers, period. We always use physical anatomical markers placed in that collimation field. Now, with extremities, sometimes you can get away with having some of it shaved off. As long as the majority of your markers in the light field, that's considered acceptable. Does that make sense? Did y'all learn that in lab as well? As long as the majority of your markers in the light field, it's considered okay. Our markers are big. No, you do have big, big markers, big yes. Those are, those are a lot bigger than markers I had in school. And the ones I used at work too. Those are, yeah, monster markers. Yeah, the tech I had in the, the she had a little big one. Yeah. Yeah, this is very small. These guys. And the markers go on the lateral side? When you look at a hand? Or Technically, it yes, but that's not a huge deal if you don't do that. If you want to talk about optimal, optimal, optimal yeah. quality, yes. We'll talk more about that soon, though, when okay, your portfolio is. Good practice. Yeah. yeah, markers, all shapes and sizes, guys. Even a baby Yoda marker, which I used to have, but you know, <laughs> you know Mama destroyed it. I can pick on her for that. She's, wow. She owns wow. it now. I gave it to her, huh? Oh. Yeah, so she'd always remember she broke my marker. What? I gave it to her when she graduated. Huh? How did she break it? That was a party she, um, she was very rough with it on the IR and it didn't stick and it fell on the floor and the ear broke off. Oh. We, had a few, we had a funeral for it. It was a very traumatizing day. Poor <laughs> Okay, guys, of course, once again, close collimation. That's for your rad protection purposes, even though. This is starting to phase out, as you'll keep hearing in the next years. They're starting to phase out the whole shielding initiative because digital technology has advanced so much that they're starting to see it is not as valuable anymore. But for now, if the registry is asking you about rad protection, we're still going to go with close collimation, optimal technique factors, and of course, gonadal shielding still at all times. And that's what is being phased out right now as we speak, gonadal shielding. Speaking of Amna, she's writing a paper on that right now for a bachelor's degree about how gonadal shielding is getting phased out. That is um, the way to the future. I foresee that is going to go in the next couple of years. I do not agree with that, by the way. I think that, the, um, you know, we learn, especially when you get to rad protection, that all radiation is going to have a risk of some effects. No matter how big or how little that dose is, there's still a risk of cancerous effects. I feel like that's opening up lawsuits, personally, in the future. Like 10 years from now, like, oh, all of a sudden I got cancer. They're going to sue all these hospitals for not shielding them. I feel like it's too much of a risk, personally. That's my two cents on it. But to the science and the scientific community <laughs> that's considered safe now to remove those. So we're going back to raking days. Is that what they trying to do? Like just not Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's reckless. I don't know what these people are smoking over there, but I, I don't necessarily agree with it. But expect that to yeah, disappear in the next few years from the curriculum. But for now we still use it. For now we still use it. I'm gonna get off my rant there about that. Of course, guys, just like you learn in patient care, make sure you're clearly explaining and demonstrating yourself what you're gonna do. It helps with extreme procedures, especially if you do not have an English-speaking patient and you're not fluent in that language, mime what you want them to do. I need you to put your hand flat. I need you to turn your hand like this. I need you to put your arm out like this. Demonstrate the position to them. Naturally and psychologically, that patient is gonna mimic your behaviors. And you really, you know, Get dramatic with it. Don't just plop your arm down like be dramatic with it. I need you to do this. Like you're acting. You want to do acting in school? Drama club, anything like that? Just me? Okay. You know, you over exaggerate for the audience. It works. Oh, breathing instructions. Hey, we don't have to worry about breathing instructions this semester either. Woohoo! Yes. No expiration or inspiration. So if I have a question about inspiration on a hand, and you choose inspiration, I can't help you anymore. <laughs> you know, if you're holding your breath for a hand x-ray, maybe just to help with the pain, I don't know. That's not, I mean, if, I don't think anyone's breathed through our hands, I hope not. Yes, no, maybe keep that to yourself, get that checked out. Uh, the only reason you would is, sometimes it can help reduce motion and help them relax if they're in a lot of pain, but, you know, we're not gonna worry about that for this chapter. It says humorous, but we're not talking about humorous yet. 
Why do you think we would have <laughs> respiration suspended for humorous procedures, by the way? It's jumping ahead to the next chapter. What do you think we would do that for? Anybody want to guess? So then you the movement. To reduce movement. Oh, whoa. Hello. And because the humerus is very close to the lung fields, you can see a little bit of lungs on a humerus x-ray. They're going to go ahead and examine the lungs if they can see on that x-ray. Because why not? It's being thorough. Although you should try to shave off as much of those lungs as possible via collimation. If it's on there, you might as well get some good chest x-ray action on there as well, you know? Makes sense? Hmm? And for the transthoracic view, very good, yes. That's a trauma view, y'all don't know what that means yet. That's a trauma view where you shoot an x-ray to look at the humerus through the lung field, which would require you to fill up those lungs for that x-ray. All right, let's talk about Street Fighter here. No, let's talk about some digits, thumbs, hand, and wrist positions. I don't know any Street Fighter fans out there. Is that, yeah. is that 38 yeah. years old? Is that 38 years old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I only have a favorite one parent time. My children hate it. They say I cheat because I only have right. tongue and I use legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. That's my best move. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 You know, according to Melanie, everything's 38 years old. So, you know. Or 1900s. Or 1900s. <laughs> My dream. Yeah. Well, that's a good technology back in 1900. Okay. What technology? Yes. All right. So we're going to talk about digits two to five. Digits two to five are all almost exactly the same. You'll notice one digit missing, that being the first digit. Why? Because the first digit or the thumb has different positioning compared to two through five. When we do the digits two through five, we're going to focus on the PA, the lateral, and the PA oblique. All three are done exactly the same. We're just isolating different fingers for review. Excuse me. So once again, remember two through five are all done exactly the same. Aside from the lateral, we're going to turn them to different sides depending on what finger's closest, but the thumb is going to have its own distinct positions and compared to two through five especially with that AP view. We're not going to do a PA thumb. Does anybody remember why? I talked about that last week. Why don't we ever do a PA thumb? Because it's OB. I want to just do a PA thumb like this. OID. OID. You got to turn that arm awkwardly and get that AP to get it close. We're always wanting to reduce OID as much as possible. Once again, to optimize that radiograph. Because what does OID do to our pictures, guys? Did you learn that PRE? What's OID do? It distorts it. It distorts it in what way? Magnifies. It magnifies it, correct. And magnification is a big no-no on x-rays. It's going to reduce that quality overall. All right, let's go to the patient position. Now, this will not change for any of your procedures we're talking about this chapter. Why? We're going to optimally seat that patient at the end of the radiographic table for all these positions we're about to talk about. Now, when it comes to the part position, we're going to have the palmar surface in the center of the IR. What's palmar mean? Palmar. See, I didn't believe you when I said those words were coming back, huh? <laughs> palmar surface is in the center of the IR. We're going to separate those digits slightly, but not too much. Why would we want to separate the digits, by the way? Why can't we just have the hand like this? Why can't I just squeeze my fingers together? You don't want them to overlap. That tissue will begin to superimpose on itself. So you want to spread those fingers slightly to isolate the digit of interest. To isolate the digit of interest. The affected digit will be what is in the center of the IR. So based on that knowledge, what digit is the star of the show on this x-ray here on the bottom? Second. Second. The second digit. The second digit. Now, once again, I know you guys, per protocol at Harris Health, are doing PA hands. But this is a PA finger if your hospital calls for a PA finger. You're going to isolate that one finger and collimate down to that one finger. So your PA finger. Now before I get to the centering, what do you think the centering point on that is? You guys did this in the lab? Second. The second. The second. The second. The second. The second. The PIP of the affected digits. The PIP of the affected digits. Very important to remember because people always mix it up with the centering for a hand, which is MCP. The Fingers are PIP, hand is MCP. And there you have it right there, guys. It's going to enter the patient at the proximal interphalangeal joint, or the PIP joint. By the way, please make note and make sure you know both those names once again. Don't focus just on the abbreviations. Make sure you can recognize it as a full word as well. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> Knock on wall. Gold star. 
gold star, yeah. They use both those terms interchangeably, so. Collimation, that's a fancy way there of saying it's gonna be very tight collimation. You wanna collimate just down to the affected digits. Um, now, where I used to work, it was actually very similar to this picture in that we always had to include at least one other finger for comparison views. But typically for a normal radiograph, you're just gonna center the one finger. And that's what the curriculum says, just one finger. But if you see it like this as well, like this picture here, that is okay. That's how I used to do it whenever I used to work. So you wanna compare those two fingers side by side, see what's normal, not normal. That's what they call comparison views. Now, what, how do you, what do you notice about the way this arm is positioned, by the way? What's all the way flat on the table as well? The humerus. The humerus, and that's very important, guys, for these x-rays. You never want to do these x-rays with the arm elevated, because naturally, even if it looks like my hand is flat, there might be some slight distortion on my fingers because I have the arm elevated. That's gonna to start to naturally angle the arm. You want everything in the same plane. Does that make sense? Forearm needs to be flat, humerus needs to be flat. It's very, very ideal for all these x-rays. Unless you're doing those special trauma views that you guys did partial flexions, that's the only time you want a part elevated. Otherwise, everything needs to be in the same plane, nice and flat. What do we want to see on digits two through five? We want the entire digit from fingertip to the distal portion of the adjoining metacarpal. What's that mean? Basically, tip of the finger to the MCP. Tip of the finger to the MCP. You do not need the entire metacarpal, by the way, just the distal metacarpal. If you have the entire metacarpal, your collation is way too, way too open. No rotation. How do we know there's no rotation on a PA finger? Equal concavity and equal amount of soft tissue on both sides of the phalangeal body. So when it says concavity, you notice how these um, each phalanx curves on the sides? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's slightly, that's concaveness. You want equal concavity on each phalanx, from the distal to the middle to the proximal. And of course, equal tissue on both sides. As you go through these x-rays, guys, we're gonna see some more of this anatomy. Make sure you're memorizing that anatomy. Are you feeling pretty comfortable about anatomy, by the way? Did the models help on Friday? I haven't decided on the winner yet, by the way. That's coming. All right, which we're gonna ask. That's coming soon. And of course, bony trabecular detail will always be vital for extremity x-rays. If you do not have bony trabecular detail, you either have your collimation open too wide or your technique is incorrect. It's vital to have trabecular detail. Y'all know what I say about trabeculae? You know what I'm talking about? The little detail the in the bone? The little lines. Those little lines, those little pores. That's called bony trabeculae. That's vital for an optimal x-ray so the doctor can get a good read of it. Because as that fades away, if there's a tiny hairline fracture, that's gonna fade away as well. So you gotta have that nice high detail on those x-rays, especially your extremities. Don't forget your joints, MCP, PIP, DIP. Each phalanx, by the way, what's the three portions of each phalanx called? The head, the head, body, base. So remember, head, body, base, head, body, base, head, body, base. And just one head there, the metacarpal. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this image? It's not centered. Else. Open enough Can you use Thank you. <laughs> Good <laughs> Bad tech. Slightly off centered on the x axis and a digital marker, correct. But nice detail. Beautiful collimation. That's, yeah. that's, that's a so Donahue quality collimation there. That's, right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That's, the, that's one of those ones you just want to hang on your wall. It's artwork right there. Except, except, for, the marker. except for the marker in the center, of course. All right, lateral digits. These are gonna vary slightly, guys, depending on which finger we're x-raying. So as you see, we have second and third, fourth and fifth grouped together. Make note of this, people often forget this. If you don't do these correctly, you're gonna risk having that OID once again. So for digits two and three, the extended affected digit is gonna have a lateral surface in contact with the IR. Anatomic position, by the way, guys. Two and three, anatomic position, that's lateral surface we're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? See that? Lateral side, two and three. Means I'm gonna put my second finger like this, my third finger like this. So you're gonna have your patient flip you the bird, turn and put that lateral surface on the IR. It's the only time you can ask your patients to flip you off. It's the only time you can flip off the patient, by the way. Mm. Although probably don't do that, no. Probably won't work out so well. But make sure that lateral surface is in contact with the IR. 
Conversely, on the other side, guys, fourth and fifth digits, the medial surface is in contact with the IR. Thus, the pinky is like this, and the fourth is like this. By the way, that's the hardest one to do, in my opinion, the fourth finger. Anyone else struggle with that one? Yeah. Or is my finger just bad? Oh, no. No, I mean, that's the hardest one to position, the fourth finger. Although the pinkies will be the most sensitive. If they have a broken pinky, they're going to be screaming at you. A lot of nerve endings on that fifth digit. So when we do second and third digits, please write that down and put a star by it. Second and third is a medial lateral projection, because the way it's laying. Fourth and fifth is a lateral medial projection, based on how it's laying on the IR. Now for the central ray, no matter which one we're doing, we're still centering that at the PIP of the affected digits. And let me tell you, this position right here, guys, if you have a broken finger, I want you to imagine for a second you have a broken finger and they're asking you to do this. How, how do you think that's going to work out for you? It's not so easy, right? So what's the what's the magic word that I taught y'all? Please. I need oh. you to please work with me. I need you to work with me and I'm going to help you out and you're going to assist them putting that finger in position. All right, big deep breaths. We're going to turn your hand. Big deep breaths. I need you to help me out here. Big deep breaths. Have them breathe. The breathing may not help with the pain, but it's a distraction technique. They're focused on the breathing, not on what you're doing with their hands. Make sense? I will work with you. Like I said, there's a lot of nerve endings in the fingers, guys. Very painful area to injury. Even if it's just like a laceration on the finger, very, very painful. Work with your patient, have them work with you. Work smarter, not harder on that. All right, what do we want to see for lateral digits? That's a pretty good one there uh, with a very nasty fracture. By the way, does anyone remember what kind of fracture that is? We learned that. It is a displacement. It has a certain name, though. Not Smith. Not Evulgen. It was the first one we looked at. Simple. Well, not categories. It had a very special name to it. Baseball. Oh, the, 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 the mallet. The mallet, yeah. Mallet baseball fracture, yeah. That's that baseball fracture right there. All right, what we want to see on a lateral digit, same thing as the PA, guys. The entire digit from the fingertip to the distal portion of the adjoining metacarpal, not the entire metacarpal, just the head of the metacarpal. So tip of the distal phalanx to the MCP, technically. That's what we want to see. Your fingernail will be in profile. That's a way to check that you're in a true lateral. You can actually see fingernails on x-rays, by the way, so if they have long ones. If they're cut like mine, you're not going to see them. Um, concave anterior surfaces of the phalanges. When we say anterior, we're talking about this surface right here, underneath the finger, has that concave shape. Also, it's not on your notes, but always look for these nice little circles on the heads of the phalanx. See what I'm talking about? Nice little perfect circle like the elbow. That tells you you're in a nice, true lateral for those digit x-rays. And of course, this is the biggest challenge right here. No obstruction of the proximal phalanx or MCP joint by adjacent digits. So what you might have to do with a lot of your patients, guys, is stand out there with them. Now, you can't do this because you're a student, but when you're a tech, put the lead jacket on, you might have to hold that finger in place for them. And one thing we learned even with kids when it comes to holding a digit in place for laterals, if you put your finger on the interior surface right here, you're not going to be in the bone. You'll be holding it out of the way. Your finger will be on the x-ray, but you're not going to be obstructing the bone. Why? If you touch the surfaces of your fingers, there's a lot of padding right there. And you'll actually just be in the tissue, not the actual bone. It's a good little spot to help hold that finger in place. A good little tactic there for you. And tape is your friend. Tape is your best friend. Yes, it is. Can I get an amen? Yes. Amen. For all those who didn't go to church yesterday. <laughs> all right. Your open IP joint spaces, of course. That's a very vital... Um, part of that evaluation criteria and our trabecular detail with good technique and good collimation. So, would you say it's an optimized x-ray, yes or no? Yes. No, it is no. not. That's no. ugly. <laughs> what, what's wrong with that? Distortion on the bottom. It's fuzzy. It is fuzzy, yeah. Digital marker. Digital marker, but it's not even centered. Center. Look at that. Yeah. So, was their patient, it looks like their patient was moving a lot. They could have been moving, could have been in a lot of pain. Obviously, they were in a lot of pain yeah. right there. Miss so, Sonny, what about that wing? Yeah, I was trying to figure that out too. I'm not sure what that is. It's some kind of 
artifact on the cassette. Maybe he was trying to hide oh, it. Oh, the lens on and he said not centered. It's not centered. It's not centered on the x-axis. Oh. Y-axis is pretty good. X-axis, which is left and right, you want it to be more so right here. Yeah, maybe they was trying to hold it. Could be. Could be. All right, the obliques. I love the obliques. Obliques are fun. It's what the oblique hands. Did anybody try my secret, my secret technique at all in lab? Did anybody try my OK symbol? Did anybody try my OK symbol? No, I wasn't sure that. Oh, come on now. I'm just going. Yeah, it was I'll show it to you in a second because guess what? As wonderful as these are, you're never going to have these. I'm so upset. I'm all excited to use my sponges. There was one at Texas Children's, but it's like a, it looked like a kid took a bite out of it. We couldn't use it anymore. It was just like missing a chunk. My guess is a kid took a bite out of it. I don't know. But it used to be so nice when we had it because you could put that hand on there and get a beautiful oblique every single time. But don't count on it. Now, important number, 45 degrees. That's always going to be a 45 degree oblique on that hand. If you have a wedge sponge, it'll help you get that perfect 45. But if you don't, there is a way to do this. It is pretty reliable, which I will demonstrate again in just a second. We do want the palmar surface to be resting on the wedge or be elevated on the cassette. And the digit of interest should be separated with no soft tissue overlap. But if you're doing that correctly, they're going to naturally separate anyway. Let's see how those gnarled arthritic hands. Um, for the central ray, that's going to be perpendicular to that PIP joint still. Now, just like with the hands, if you direct a patient to make the OK symbol, that's a universal symbol. Everyone knows the OK symbol. You make the OK symbol and you work. Oh, thank you. You make the OK symbol and you rest it on the cassette, like so. My hand is already now naturally in a 45 degree oblique, just like this. OK symbol, straight down 45. But I have to do one more thing. I have to separate that finger. Now, depending on what finger of interest there is, I need to adjust the centering. If it's the fourth digit, move it over here. Pinky, move it over here. Third here, second here. Does that make sense? Depending on what digit we're looking at, we're going to move that centering around. But if you're having trouble finding 45, OK symbol, rest the hand down, move the second finger. And then you're naturally in a 45 perfect oblique every single time. And patients know that universal sign. They know how to do that, even if they don't speak English. That's going to save you a lot of headache, especially if you don't have these nice sponges available to you, which you will not. These run for hundreds of dollars, by the way, a piece. A little piece of um, sponge, probably about five, six hundred dollars for one of those. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's medical equipment. They're going to overcharge the hospitals for medical equipment every single time. It never fails. Pretty good marker placement right there. Um, but. PIP joint of the affected digit, guys. PIP of the affected digits. You'll see right here, they got some really fancy sponges. They even put a sponge under the elbow there, give them some extra comfort. <laughs> you know, you put some towels under there to help them out a little bit. You got a question? Yeah. Um, I was doing that in lab uh, for Ms. Molina. She said that, oh, we only do this for the lateral. I said, no, I thought we, we can do it for the lateral as well. Oblique but oblique, it works. I can show her. She just made it. I've never seen that before. Lateral, you can do the same thing for fan laterals. OK symbol, separate the fingers. It's in a perfect spot. We'll talk about that with the hand, though. Works for both. I have a question. Huh? I have a question. So yeah, for that ahead. oblique, you're only looking at, if you're only, only looking at one digit, you would call it to that one? To that one digit, correct. So for the thumb, fingers. You would just call it to the thumb. So thumb is not going to be, oh, so five. remember, this is only digits two through five, uh, guys. Thumb is going to be different. In fact, thumb has the easiest oblique on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone just slam their hand down? Yes, that's all you do. Just slam the hand down. It's, it's oh, yeah. What do you want to see, guys? Entire digit. Same thing, guys. <laughs> Distal portion of the phalanx to the metacarpal or tip of the finger to the MCP once again. Not the whole metacarpal once again. Just ahead of it. Well, that's a really ugly picture. Really pixelated. Yeah. Digit must be rotated at 45 degrees to show that concavity on the elevated side of the pharyngeal bodies. And obliques, guys. The main reason we do obliques with all of our extremity x rays is this reason right here to open up joint spaces. For the digits two through five, we are in particular opening up the IP and MCP joints specifically but we almost always do obliques on extremity work to open up a joint space. That's usually the main reason for doing obliques. That's a great test question if I've ever heard one. Mm. Mm. Feeling it. What did Jalen say? He goes, test, test question. question. Yeah. <laughs> test question. So pretty good centering on this x-ray, guys. 
nasty digital marker. This person probably used a really bad technique. That's why it's so pixelated. Not enough mass. Y'all see the pixelation on that? That's what we call poor spatial resolution. Poor spatial resolution. I think it's that's yeah. <laughs> or it's what we call noise. It's also called noise on a radiograph. It's I think noise. That one's pixelated because you download it from someone. Because the L is pixelated too. Wouldn't the L be good? Maybe it is, but this came straight from the Merrill's book. Is it with that bad in your book? Mm -hmm. Kind of looks pixely in the book too. A little bit better in the book. Maybe it was a bad transfer. Maybe you're right. All right, let's take our first break before we get to the thumb, guys. It's 9 o'clock. Take yourself a 10-minute break. Get you some coffee. Stretch.